Hello all, we're going to evaluate an improper integral today and uh, everybody hopefully remembers that an improper integral is really just a combination between a limit and an integral. So we're going to evaluate the improper integral, integral from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x times e to the negative x dx. So let's go ahead and write that out. This is going to be the limit, and I'm going to choose b as my letter here, b to infinity, of 1 to b of 1 minus x times e to the negative x dx. So now I have this separated into two parts. I have the integral part that I already know how to do from previous lectures, and the limit part, which I can do later. This is stuff from Calculus 1 that we've seen before. So let's go ahead and give it a shot. Uh, we'll go ahead and we'll just write the limit as b approaches infinity here. And let's go ahead and try to figure out what this integral is going to be. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to resort to integration by parts here. And so we have to choose a derivative part and an antiderivative part to get this done. The derivative part is going to be 1 minus x in this case, and the antiderivative part is going to be e to the negative x. When we make this choice, the rest of the uh, process just kind of works uh, in very expected ways. The antiderivative of e to the negative x is negative e to the negative x. The derivative of 1 minus x is going to be negative 1. And after we have all of those pieces, we can just come down here and instead of writing the integral, we can do the by parts formula and give ourselves something a little bit easier to work with. So this limit is the limit of u times v, which is going to be negative 1 minus x times e to the negative x. And then it's going to be minus the integral of v times u prime. And v times u prime is just going to be e to the negative x. And because we have this uh, definite integral from 1 to b, we have to evaluate both of these from 1 to b, 1 to b, and there we go. So we're still just going to leave this limit in the front here. We are not going to touch it. We do not need it right now. So it just sits here. And let's continue on with the integral. So I won't evaluate this, uh, this term in the front here. I'm just going to leave it for now. Uh, in fact, I'm going to multiply the e to the negative x through it, so might as well do that right now. So I've got a negative e to the negative x and then plus uh, e to the negative x uh, times x. And so let me write that x in the front. Okay, so there we go. We have e to the negative x plus x times e to the negative x. And all of that is just from bringing that negative sign through and multiplying the e to the negative x through and this is still being evaluated from 1 to b. Next up, we know what the antiderivative of e to the negative x is. The antiderivative is negative e to the negative x. We already did that. So this is just plus e to the negative x. This is also being evaluated from 1 to b. And of course, you don't need to evaluate those separately. You can do it all at once. Because you see you can do it all at once, we can actually do a little bit of simplification here. We have a negative e to the negative x. We have a positive x e to the x to the negative x, and we have a positive e to the negative x. All of this is being evaluated from 1 to b. And we can see we have a negative e to the negative x, a positive e to the negative x. These can both go away. And the only thing we really need to evaluate is this x times e to the negative x. So this is the limit as b approaches infinity. And let's go ahead and put the b and the 1 in here. So we put the b in here, and we're going to get b times e to the negative b. We put 1 in here, and we're going to get 1 times e to the negative 1. And there we go. That's helpful. And so now we just need to evaluate the limit. The integral is completely done. We are done with anything having to do with uh, the integral. So let's go ahead and see what happens when b approaches infinity. When b approaches infinity, this first term b approaches infinity. The e to the negative b is going to approach 0. And so we have infinity times zero, sort of. And what our brain says in these instances is that L'Hopital's rule might be a good idea. We know exactly what the limit of e to the negative first power is, so that's not really going to be a problem. It's just e to the negative first. And so what we really need to do is we really need to do L'Hopital's rule. So let's go ahead and give ourselves a little bit more room, and we will work on L'Hopital's rule. All right, so uh, L'Hopital's rule. Oh. 
So we're going to evaluate the limit as b approaches infinity. And to do L'Hopital's rule, we need to see that there is a fraction. The appropriate fraction to write here is uh, b over e to the b. And so we can do L'Hopital's rule just on this first term. I am no longer considering the limit applying to the second term, so I'm doing L'Hopital's rule on just the first term. And so this is going to be the limit. Uh, and so I'm really thinking of this, right? Uh, so this is going to be the limit as b approaches infinity. We use L'Hopital's rule, and by L'Hopital's rule, we're just going to have 1 over e to the b, right? So we have that limit, and this is minus uh, 1 over e, basically. And ask, we have to ask ourselves what happens as b goes to infinity here. And as b goes to infinity, the denominator gets infinitely large, meaning this limit is going to be 0. So this is 0 minus 1 over e. And so the entire limit is negative 1 over e, which means this is the value of that integral, right? This is the value of the integral that we started with, the integral from 1 to infinity of 1 minus x e to the negative x dx. So hopefully this helps. Uh, it's a fairly long problem, and we have to be comfortable with L'Hopital's rule, so that causes a little bit of extra difficulty sometimes. If you have any questions on this, let me know, and uh, happy mapping.